We begin this service by acknowledging that we are on indigenous land covered by Treaty 18. For thousands of years, um, indigenous peoples have cared for, built communities, and used this land. We specifically thank um, the Patoon, Anishinaabe, and the Wendat, who are the most recent stewards of this place. This acknowledgement reminds us of our legal obligations to indigenous peoples and our responsibilities to care for the lands. Please join me the lighting of the Christ candle ritual. In the beginning, God gave light to the world. In time, God sent Christ to live among us and to shine with the glory of redemption and love. May the light of Christ shine bright and true within each of us. Good morning. Today is January 14, 2024. We are here at St. John's United Church in Alliston. Welcome to St. John's United Church. And welcome those who visit us and worship with us together. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Fellowship will be held in Shilton Hall right after this gathering. We have three announcements scheduled. Andy Owen, Pat Morrison, and John Morrison separately. frosty, brisk winter morning. We are Canadian. We can deal with it. Two weeks from today, Sunday, January 28, on behalf of the Family Focus team, I'd like to extend a warm welcome for each of you to attend our first Messy Church of 2024. Remind yourself how God gave the world a chance for a new start following the great biblical flood. Refresh your memory about how God's faithful servant, Noah, follows God's instruction despite what seemed to be impossible tasks. Through a series of activities, we will reflect on the challenges that Noah and his family endured for well over 40 days of rain and seemingly endless drifting in the ark. Help us to create a huge puzzle. Build mini models of the ark. Meet some of the animals. Remind ourselves of God's promise made to Noah. Create paper doves and enjoy playing in the water. Please reach out to family, friends and neighbors and join us from 4.30 till 7 p.m. in Shilton Hall on Sunday, January 28th. To help us plan for this event, please fill in the chart on the bulletin board in the hallway leading towards Shilton Hall. Hope to see everyone there. Good morning, Happy New Year. This is a reminder that our 
next concert in our series is coming up on February 23rd at 7 o'clock in the evening. Um, it features VC2 Cello Duo, and I'm hoping that all of you will reach out to friends and family um, and tell them about our concerts and hopefully maybe sell me some tickets for me. Um, that would be a big help. Um, so please uh, keep in mind and uh, it will be an awesome concert. Thank you. This is a family affair. Um, just for your information, well, good morning everybody. This, for your information, I got a phone call from Anthony Jones from the Potato Festival Committee, and he wanted to know if we wanted to put an ad in their program, a quarter page ad for nothing, so I told him to go ahead and do that. And there will be another program coming out later on listing all the activities during the Potato Fest, and that's when we put our time in, what time we start on the Saturday, if we're going to hold it again. Is everybody in favor of holding the Potato Pancake Breakfast again? Please raise your hands, and remember that you'll probably be asked to volunteer. <laughs> so, we'll, thank you very much. On behalf of St. John's Congregation, I'd like to extend our deepest sympathy to the family of Mildred Fraser, who passed away this past Monday, January 8th, at Matthew's house at the age of 80. Her funeral is scheduled today at 2 o'clock in the afternoon at uh, Drury Funeral Center. Visitation will begin at 1 o'clock. No further announcement, I'd like to invite you to turn around to pass the peace of Christ, one another saying, peace be with you, responding, and also with you. Call to worship. The water is the stuff. Okay, we are ready. The water is the life. Water is the stuff of life. Water is the stuff of life. May we help one another.
to center on the journey of true life, the journey to deep well of God's generous love. Amen. Opening hymn from Voices United 100, when Jesus comes to be baptized, due to copyright issue, please open your hymn book, Voices United, number 100. Prayer of the week. Come on in because the water's fine. Actually, what I mean is to come on in and enjoy the waters of baptism. Once baptized, always baptized. That's true. But our baptism is not a one and done kind of commitment. Yep. A beginning that extends for a lifetime of growth and becoming. Then let us gather as one in prayer to seek God's guidance. Amen. Let us sing together the Lord's Prayer.
Sharon Smith to come forward for the scripture reading. The scripture this morning is taken from Mark chapter 1, verses 4 to 11. So John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the whole Judean region and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the straps of his sandals. I have, been, I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. That be the word.
The Gospel of Mark, the oldest one out of the four canonical Gospels in the New Testament, begins the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is a proclamation. And it's interesting enough that it has no full story of Jesus in the Gospel of Mark. No angels, no shepherds, no wise men, no travel of the Holy Family to Bethlehem, no visit to Jerusalem on the eighth day after his birth, and no escape to Egypt in the Gospel of Mark. After a short introduction of John the Baptist, this Gospel directly leads us to the Jesus baptism. If we had the Gospel of Mark alone, we would learn that Jesus was recognized as the Son of God at the time of baptism at the Jordan River. You are my Son, the Beloved. With you, I'm well pleased. When? At the age of 30? That information age 30, is only found in the Gospel of, Ma Gospel of Luke. Number 30 is an adult and mature age in the Bible. By the way, the average life expectancy at the time of Jesus was 40. So it was therefore quite realistic that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was expecting the baby at age 13. When I was younger in South Korea, not many lived over 60 in the 1960s. So when one turned 60, it was a big community event. What is life today's average life expectancy here in Canada? According to statistics, 81.75 years in 2020, 82.93 years in 2023, and this year, 83.11. So almost a year add. So in, in, in 2034, it might be 91 years old. And in, in, nine, in 2045, it may be 100 years old. Jesus was recognized as the Son of God through baptism, as an adult, not as a child according to the Gospel of Mark. What about Matthew and Luke, which were written 20 years after the Gospel of Mark? He was recognized as the Son of God immediately after he was born. Am I right? That's the Christmas story we have. That's why angels, shepherds, and wise men visit. How about the Gospel of John? Written 50 years after the Gospel of Mark. At the time Jesus was born? No. He was not only Son of God, but He was God. He was with God 
way before he was born. So the Gospel of John does not need Christmas story. Even in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, before Abraham, I was. It means that the mythologization, mythologization of Jesus, Christology, becoming son of God, was made of in the earlier Christian community in the first century after Jesus' life death, and resurrection. Some scholars even say that Jesus never claimed that he was divine, son of God, during his life. It was only after he was crucified some disciples began to have a vision that he was a divine figure sent by God. So we must follow him in order to make peace, in order to build God's kingdom and justice here on earth. And then the Christian movement began. But take a look around this world today. The world leaders follow the teaching of Jesus to build God's kingdom. My point is this, that the story of Jesus in the Gospel of Mark, the first written gospel, is much more realistic, human, and historical than that of the other three Gospels. Does it make sense? Let us be realistic. When were you recognized as the son of God or a daughter of God? Let me be realistic. When? The so-called mainline Christian communities, including the United Church of Canada, indicate it when the child is baptized, including infant baptisms. Through the ritual of baptism, we claim that the child to be born, child was born, or to be born is the child of God. You are my son, you are my daughter, the beloved with you. God is well pleased. So go and live like God's child. The evangelical Christian communities, however, have a different perspective. It is when one publicly confesses Jesus as the Son of God, the Savior, which is the sign of a born-again Christian, followed by an adult baptism. The rationale is found in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 10. Can do we have the words on the screen? Yes, if you, that's the Romans chapter 10. If you confess your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart leading to righteousness and one confesses with the mouth leading to salvation. So they do not perform baptisms for infants. 
One might grumble why evangelical churches are growing so many younger people and the mainline churches are declining. One of the reasons, one of the reasons that they take the adult, Bible, adult baptism seriously. As the church, we offer infant baptism to those requesting, and the result is they seldom return. Infant baptism today is more like cultural, pastoral, and traditional than faithful commitment. Am I right? That's what we practice. There are pros and cons to infant baptism. I indeed believe all children born must be recognized as the children of God, no matter what. But it is an ongoing challenge to raise them with the Christian values, ethos, and teachings of Jesus in this secular world. That's what I believe Andy Owen's invitation this morning, come to Massey Church. Do you have any idea? This is my suggestion. Turning 60 today is like turning 30 at the time of Jesus. Am I right? My calculation is correct, I believe. So, because the reality, when Jesus turned 30, I think he, he, just, he just left everything behind. So he, he, he went to John the Baptist to be baptized. And after that, he became a full-time child of God. And today, the lifestyle has been changed ever since. We need more education period, and we need more job searching time, and we have to build a family, you know, develop careers and raise children, and here and there, it takes at least 60 years. Am I right? So when people turn 60 or retirement time, I believe that's the time to be back to church to become a full-time children of God. Does it make sense? Right after fellowship last Sunday, I went to Matthew's house to see Mildred Fraser. There was a time to adjust when I arrived, so I was waiting at the corner of the building. A senior nurse came to me to ask, are you a local minister? And I answered her, yes, I am. And she said, I am spiritual, but not religious. Do you know what that means? I am spiritual, but not religious. What's that, what does that mean? I do practice yoga, some spiritual exercise, or spiritual meditation, but I do not go to church. That means I'm spiritual, but not religious today. But she, she continues to say, but I'm, I'm wondering, I'm not nowadays, I'm, I'm quite anxious today, nowadays. You see, all the worldly happenings. So I wonder my, about my life, my children's life. And the conversation went on, I learned that she was a united. She was baptized in a local church in Toronto, and her, children, her children are also baptized 
in the United Church of Canada. So, I just suggested, maybe it's the time for you to go back to your church. And there was a little pause, some kind of resistance going back to church. So I said to her, I have an idea. Recently, I wrote a book and published this one. So I'd like to, you know, present it to you. And it, it might be different than traditional one. I try to interpret the Bible in a deeper way, so you might like it. Oh, yes, i like to have one. So a few days later, I revisit the same place to hand it over to her. And at the same, same day, same place, when I entered the building, Matthew's house, the receptionist just greeted me in Korean. Right away, I didn't say any words. But she recognized me as a Korean. Do you remember my costume last Sunday? The traditional Korean uh, gown? And so she just, she just saw me at the door just, and, and spoke to me, 안녕하세요, greeting in Korean. I was quite surprised. How did you know that I'm Korean? I mean, illegally, I'm Canadian, okay, by the way. Anyhow. She said, uh, I was in Korea teaching English for three years in, in 2003 and 2006. So I introduced myself as the minister of St. John's United Church, and she said, oh, are you? My grandmother was the organist of that church. I don't know who she was. You might remember in 1960s. And, and then she said, I was baptized in that church too. So that's the, the, the old conversation I, I had. And, but on my way back, I just met her again. I like to hand it over the book I wrote. I hope you read it. I don't push you to come back to your church. But that's my way to, to meet people. And, and what I learned through the conversation with the senior nurse, um, there, there, there are some people in this world who are spiritually hungry and thirsty. So my suggestion this morning to you is this. Use this book. So you don't need to purchase this book. I mean, this one is funded by Alistair St. John's Foundation. Just feel free to come and ask me. I need two books two copies of the book. And I like to hand over my neighbor. So that's the way we, we approach and meet people to, to invite them to open, to talk about Jesus so that they may come back. I think that's enough for today. Our next hymn is from Voices United 282, Long Before the Night.
Baptism is about an offering and a purpose. It is free offering of God's love to us and our offering of a commitment to love and serve God. The collection today is an offering toward the purposes of God and God's purpose for us. We give our offering in the spirit of baptism as a commitment to God's loving purposes. Our offering are now being received. Just friends and siblings in all our neighbors, near and far away. You may be seated. The closing hymn is Voices United, 101 Songs of Thankfulness and Praises.
As you go forth from this place, remember whose you are. Remember to be disciples you are called to be. Remember to love as you are loved. So let us join in the singing of a, the blessing to each other in Voices United 965 together. <laughs> 